Hi, it's the autumn, it's squash season, which in our case means one thing, easy and delicious soup. This is a nice simple recipe and uses a few useful techniques for you to keep under your belt for the future. First off, we're cutting into the tough skin of this pumpkin-like queen squash. You'll need a strong, sharp knife. A classic chef's knife should do the job. This is a lovely variety of squash, loads of flesh and great flavour. Perfect for roasting. A good sturdy chopping board will help also. We don't want this thing slipping around. Carefully cut your squash in half and then cut those bits in half again. You can also keep the raw seeds at this stage, scrape them out, wash off the stringy bits, and then you can dry them out for planting or bake them off with a bit of oil and some spices for a snack or to top your soups and salads. Okay, add some oil to your baking tray, add your squash, skin on is fine, it's much easier to remove once it's cooked, salt, pepper, and a bit more oil on top to stop it sticking. And then we'll loosely cover with a layer of foil to protect it in the oven. Right, into the oven they go for about 45 minutes at 180 degrees centigrade or 350 Fahrenheit. That gives us plenty of time to get the rest of the soup underway. Peel and roughly chop one onion. Add to your pan, plus a glug of oil, medium heat. Pepper, salt, and a knob of butter for added richness and to help colour the onions for a deeper flavour. Stir all of those together. Chop a good sized clove of garlic. Roughly chopped is fine. We're going to blend it all together anyway, so no problem. Add to your onions. Now we can add a good splash of any vinegar. About a teaspoon and a half is fine. The squash is quite sweet, so this will help balance it out. Now this bit is optional, but really a little bit special. Here we have some powdered porcini, or seps. We want just enough to give some earthy depth to the soup. Just a third of a teaspoon, no more. Just enough to give a subtle background hint. Now we can slowly cook all of those ingredients together until they're just starting to turn brown. Stir occasionally to stop them sticking to the bottom. Take your time here, we don't want to burn anything. Adding water to the pan now gives us a deep, rich stock. The perfect base for this autumnal soup. Now for a little tip. Nothing gives soup a velvety texture quite like adding a floury potato. A real game changer this one. Try it for yourselves. Peel, chop, add to the pan. The roasted squash is out of the oven now and it's looking really good. How do you tell it's cooked? Get yourself a small knife and give it a few pokes. It should easily go through the flesh without any resistance. Remove any of the seeds if you haven't already. If the squash is too hot, allow it to cool down a bit. That'll make handling it a bit easier. If, like me, you're too impatient to wait, dive straight in and just accept the burnt fingertips. You'll now be able to spoon the soft flesh away from the skin. Look at that delicious squash. This is the point of roasting the squash. It's to concentrate the flavour, to give your soup some impact. Of course, you can just peel and chop a raw squash and throw in some stock, but it's really not the same and can't compete with the soup where the squash has been roasted first. In this roasted state, your squash can now be used for loads of dishes. It's really good added to risottos, pasta sauces, pie fillings, and of course soups. It keeps well in the fridge, and you can also freeze it for later use. Now you should find yourself with a glorious pile of soft, delicious squash. Add about three heat teaspoons to your pan. Simmer for five minutes. Add some cream, creme fraiche or coconut milk, and blitz. I find a stick blender quick and easy for this, but use whatever you have available. As long as it's blended, it'll be great. Squash are really great value at this time of year, and you'll have loads of interesting varieties to choose from, beyond the usual butternut squash you find in the supermarkets. No offence, butternut, but you are a little basic. You can use any type for this recipe, whatever you fancy. Yes, including butternut. Wow, there we go, a lovely autumnal soup with perfect consistency. A real cold weather warmer, and a blanket in a bowl. For a smoother, more elegant version, should you have royalty popping around for lunch, pass the soup through a sieve to remove any pieces that avoided the blender. Use the back of a ladle to gently push the soup through. It's a nice idea to top soups. This adds a little textural interest, something to balance out flavours. Here I'm using some crumbled feta cheese, which has a lovely tanginess that works great against the sweetness of the squash. I'm indulging a little with some good olive oil and finishing with some chopped chives for a bit of colour. Serve with some warm, crusty bread for a seasonal hearty lunch. One of the awesome things about squash is that it goes so well with loads of different flavourings. So if you like a bit of sage or rosemary, chilli or ginger, pop a bit in and see where it takes you. 
Don't be scared. It's only cooking. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.